Welcome to another video! Well, Frank, welcome to an episode of China Love Hate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Hello. Cheers. Hi. Thank you for having me. Sure. Now, for my subscribers out there, yes. Frank is a subscriber as well. And he approached me a while ago. Mm -hmm. And Frank is a gay man living in China. True. Right? Yeah, okay. believe it or not. <laughs> to many people's surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. And the reason it's fantastic is it's nice to be able to give the perspective of a gay person to my subscribers because although I'm pretty sure the majority of my subscribers like myself are normal well sorry not normal normal, normal <laughs> heterosexual not freaks males no, I didn't say that no, at all okay. but I'm quite sure there are plenty of people out there who are gay or perhaps know people who are gay who may be thinking about coming to China so it's good to get a perspective from you so thank you for coming today well thank you for allowing me to talk about this because it is a topic that not a lot of people talk about not only in China but also on YouTube Right. So I'm very excited to be discussing this today. Okay, now before we continue even, I'd like to tell you all that Frank is also a YouTuber, right? I am, yes. Okay. He's got his own gay channel. <laughs> it's very gay. Okay, so... <laughs> if... Well, it's, it's a channel that I, I talk a lot about my life experiences in China. I've been here a couple of years, uh, and I do cover a lot of topics regarding okay. what it's like to be gay here, and I have some of my gay Chinese friends actually come on my channel and share their experiences too. Great, so if you guys are interested in gay stuff, there is a link down below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So Who please, is it? Yeah, please, uh, if that's your thing, go check out his channel. But let's get down to what we're okay. here for today, and that yeah. is China Love Hate. Love Hate, right. And this is something I've started where I just ask various expats from different backgrounds and, you know, like yourself, we had a vegan before. Yeah. Next time we'll probably have an entrepreneur or whatever, it doesn't nice. matter. Now. I'm going to ask you three questions. Okay. okay, first of all, well, three things that you like, or I should say, love about living in China. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing? Well, the pros and cons change depending on how long you've been here and how much you've adapted. The number one pro for me is definitely the novelty of China. It's a country that is always changing, and to be a part of that change, especially Shenzhen, how quickly the city is expanding. Um, it's exciting because it inspires you to change and grow, and uh, there's, it's never gets boring here. That's one of the, the things back home that I was kind of feeling like everything just kind of got dull and plateaued, but then I came to China and everything just kind of woke up again with it inside me. So definitely the novelty is one of my top pros of being in China. Oh, fantastic, yeah. yeah. Definitely, anyone comes to Shenzhen, they'll just see this constant growth around you all the time, yeah. and there's no way you could ever settle down or stagnate in a city like this. No, yeah. you'll leave. You'll have to just leave. Yeah. Um, and you find that those expats usually do end up leaving very soon after they come here. Sure. They're not able to adapt. Understood. Okay, the second thing that you love about China. The second thing I love about China is actually the Chinese people here. Uh, mm -hmm. I have, I mean, originally when I came to China, I had this definite mistrust towards Chinese people, and I, I didn't know who I could trust, who I could talk to. But after I opened up to Chinese people, they have transformed my experience here. Uh, their, their patience, their humility, um, their kindness. Chinese people I found to be very generous, very helpful as if, when you put yourself out there as a foreigner. And I admire how curious they are in uh, guiding expats here and really uh, introducing them to Chinese culture because I found overall they really are so grateful that you are here visiting their country. Uh, so my Chinese friends have really made this experience so special. Fantastic, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. If you live here in China, you will find that the, the locals, once you get to know them, they're very hospitable yes. and genuine and they're always very curious. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, third thing that you really love about China. Um, the third thing is, I think, just the affordability being here. Uh, originally, I came as an ESL teacher. Uh, now I run my own leadership coaching business uh, where I, I help expats and natives do some inner work and uh, provide some mental health support, which there seems to be a lack of in, mm. in Shenzhen, but also in, in China as, as a whole. Um, but it's very affordable to live in China. I think that uh, it's easy to travel and you have access to so many other countries in this area. 
So I always tell people thinking of coming to China, look into Shenzhen because I didn't even know what Shenzhen was before I came here. Uh, when I came to China, my mentality was Shanghai or Shanghai. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. come, I'm not gonna bother. Mm. But when I did come to Shenzhen, I just suddenly fell in love with the city. I think it's a very special and unique part of China. Yeah. Uh, it's great that we're nearby Hong Kong and we just right. have so much access to all these other cool and exciting countries in Asia. Absolutely right. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. And the fact that you've been able to start your own thing shows you the kind of spirit that this city embodies. You know, it's just full of entrepreneurs and it business is. and it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's really exciting to be able to do that here and uh, do workshops and meet with people one-on-one -on -one because I found that Chinese people and expats, there seems to be this common thread of people want to grow. People mm. want to develop themselves and see what it is they can do personally to become more more uh, powerful just uh, from a mental state yeah. uh, and really embrace life with more courage and purpose so excellent yeah. Yeah. fantastic okay now unfortunately we have to get on to the the on. bad stuff right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. things that you maybe hate is a strong word so let's go with dislike okay. or severely dislike or okay. Despise about yeah. China. Well, okay. you know, first one. the first one, you know, that, that's a great question because, again, when you're here for so long, mm. the things that originally bothered you don't really bother you so much. Right. Like when I first came here, it was everything it was the, the water, the food, the everything, just the, the pollution, mm. the spitting. Oh, yeah. um, but eventually, you just kind of move beyond that, and um, things don't really start to bother you as much because. At least with me, I found that I just take more responsibility for what what is the feeling that's so uncomfortable, and I can control that. So, um, for example, like internet censorship. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's incredibly frustrating, especially as a YouTuber and blogger. You can imagine, you know how it how it is. But really, what's what's unsettling about that, and the main con that I always say about being in China is the feeling of isolation. Right. Like you're mm -hmm. disconnected, or you're missing out from what's going on in your home country. Um, so it's not so much about the censorship, it's, it's that censorship fuels the isolation. Yeah. And I find that every so often, I think all expats kind of sink into that, at least a little bit, sure. where they just feel like they're alone or they're disconnected, mm -hmm. um, or they just need to, to have some kind of community that can understand them. Yes, okay, I agree with you there. It is yeah. difficult, especially you know when you've got a different culture surrounding you and you've got people who don't really understand where you're from, it can be difficult, but yeah. Find your ways to get over it, you'll be all right. Huh? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about the second thing that really bothers you. Okay, so I really only have one other thing, and that is the overall stigma uh, towards homosexuality in mm. China right now. Yeah. Um, being gay, when I came here, I was very curious to learn about what the culture is like here, what the mentality is like, and uh, I found that it is definitely a long journey for China as a whole. Sure. And uh, I've been grateful to also meet a lot of Chinese friends here and get a first-hand idea of what it's like to be gay in China in 2016. Right. Well, that is, it, that is one big thing about China. First of all, it's still quite conservative here, Absolutely. right? And traditional in a lot of aspects, at least with the older generation. But also people here are not politically correct at all. They're very straightforward. They're very openly racist and sexist and they will tell you what they think of you and they will say, oh, you're fat or oh, you're gay or whatever. So, you know, I, that must have been quite a shock to you when you got here. Absolutely. Coming from America where the whole country is just legalized gay marriage and coming to a country where that's not even in a topic of discussion yet, mm. uh, it was very shocking. And mm. I did feel like at me as an expat, even I had to... Um, be careful about how I presented myself in certain circumstances. Right. Um, so right now where things stand with China is about 70% of the country doesn't accept homosexuality right. at all. Yeah. And that's including major cities like mm -hmm. Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou. Um, and uh, there actually there is a recent court case that made news and made headlines in China where a same-sex couple, two men, were rejected from getting married when they went to their civil affairs bureau. This was in Hunan province, and they they took it to court. They filed a case, and it was the first time China actually heard this case. So it was a landmark thing for the country to actually give this attention. Yeah. But unfortunately, just last week it was denied. The judge dismissed the case. Right. But it has caused some discussion amongst Chinese people, yeah. and it is building awareness. And uh, something interesting was that uh, the couple, when they were discussing this case, there's a Chinese expression, yifu, yifu, ichi, 
decomposition. And it means one man, one woman. Right. But uh, Chinese people also use this term to describe monogamy in general. Right. So when people think of monogamy, they think one man, one, one woman. Mm. And what the couple was trying to prove in this case and demonstrate was that it doesn't have to be about the gender of the couple. It's more right. about the identity of just two people who love each other and are together. Right. Um, so it is actually it is absolutely a struggle that mm. China is still going through and may go through for many many years or perhaps decades. Okay, that's that's very good. Now, since we're on that topic, yeah, I would like you to maybe give some advice to any subscribers of mine out there who perhaps are gay and thinking about coming. Now, I've actually had a couple of questions from yeah. subscribers have sent me that like what the, you know what's it like if you're gay in China like mm -hmm. what like what kind of advice could you give someone who's on the yeah. fence that should I go to China should I stay home um, can you give them some advice that's a great question and I think that my experience as an expat mm -hmm. is totally different from the Chinese sure. LGBT community's experience in their country because I have the privilege of leaving whenever I want. Right. Um, I would say that uh, it is possible and it is okay to be here, mm. and there is absolutely a gay community mm. to connect with and meet. Uh, it's more underground and hidden, and I, I always say that uh, one of the difficulties about the gay community here is that it's invisible. You know, back in America, if you see two guys holding hands or putting their arms around each other, usually you can assume that they're gay. Yeah. But here, you see men, two men and two women, doing that all the time. And it just yeah. means that they have a close friendship. Yeah. So on one hand, it's great because people are more open and there's not this stigma about looking feminine if you're mm. a guy. Yeah, a lot of Chinese guys look very feminine. They look very feminine. And when I came here, I thought, wow, oh, everyone's gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought, wow, this is great. You're not the only one. <laughs> I thought, wow, everyone's gay. It's so open here. But then mm. I realized that, no, that's just the, the acceptable mannerisms and behavior. Yeah. And the gay community is, blends in so much more, yeah. which makes it harder for other Chinese people to recognize them and notice them. Right. So I would say to my advice to a, a foreigner coming here, an expat, uh, would be to just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, definitely if you're going to come as an English teacher, I have heard stories about uh, schools outright rejecting gay teachers mm. or not approving of that. Um, so I would absolutely uh, choose to not disclose that just to right. just to be safe right. um, but there is absolutely a supportive community here it does exist and especially mm. if you're going to be in like hong kong or taiwan yeah. if you're really concerned those places i found are much more aware and accepting of gay culture right. that's fantastic advice and i think you can just take this sort of advice to heart it doesn't matter if you're gay or if you have any kind of political agenda or if there's anything any cause that you are a part of or whatever it's better to just leave that out of your work yeah. you know you can get away with that overseas and you know stand up for your rights and project your whatever it is that you you're doing or are fighting for but here you know do that in your your own time but keep it out of your work because people are very like especially in the workplace they demand to see a photo on your resume it's all the way about how you look yeah. the way you present yourself that's how they're going to judge you so yeah absolutely i'm glad you say that because integrity is very important for me sure and i questioned myself at first on whether or not I should be disclosing this even in my classroom. Yeah. And I was teaching middle school students when I first came to China, and these are very impressionable ages when I know that there is a kid in my class who is gay. There's no doubt about that. So I want to be able to demonstrate that it is okay to be gay. Mm. Uh, and I did have one time, a lot of my students were bickering and, and making jokes about being gay. And I just wrote on the board, you know, two stick figures of men with a heart. And I said, in America, gay is okay. Right. Not to project my my beliefs onto China, but just to let you know from my perspective, mm. this is okay. Right. Because I think about the one person in the classroom who has never had someone in their whole life tell them that it's okay to be who you are. Right. With that said though, in terms of me or any foreigner coming to China, you can have integrity, but in a professional context, you don't have to disclose that. Just like yes. you wouldn't say to, to a classroom or to a group of people, hey guys, I'm Winston and I'm straight. Sure. Straight exactly. people don't have to acknowledge or disclose their sexuality. Correct. So gay people also don't have to do that. That's very good advice. Like, yeah. really, very, very good advice. Thank yeah. you so much. Well, you know, this number two basically went into two different topics. So I think we've covered our three things here. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, Frank, thank you very much for coming here and, well, being frank about your <laughs> situation. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that you've probably unknowingly helped a lot of people who were sitting on the fence, maybe had a lot of questions. So. 
Thank you for coming out here. Thank you so much for letting me talk about this topic. I know it is a bit taboo still in China. Mm -hmm. And if anyone has more questions, they could reach out to me. My website is thefranklife.com, mm -hmm. or they could check out my YouTube channel for more videos about this topic. Sure, well, I'll basically just leave links down in the description, and you can go check it out if you're interested in that kind of thing. Cool. Anyway, thank you for coming. Thank you very right, much. See yeah. you around. See Cheers. You. Thank you. And guys, don't forget, as always, stay, stay awesome. awesome. <laughs> cool. <laughs>